Hello, I'm Carson from Team 5203G, and this is a quick explanation video for MyNoon, which was an early robot concept uh, designed by Owl and Gremlin. And so uh, what we did was we basically hole counted the 62A robot from in the zone. Uh, we saw mobile goals and we saw objects to score on mobile goals, and we thought 62 would be pretty cool. Uh, but we also thought that being able to hold mobile goals internally to the robot would be really nice. So I'll start with the drivetrain. Um, we have a very long drivetrain. It's very similar to the one shown on the 62 robot, except it's low clearance because we don't have to go over the pipe. It's 600 RPM to direct. Chain drive. The reason we did chain drive was both for the length, but also so that we had internal space for the actual mobile goal gearing. So you can see the entire uh, mobile goal mech is within the drivetrain. It simplifies all of the structure. The robot is less than 10 pounds, um, so that was very important because we were trying to run 600 RPM direct. Uh, we're actually on two and a half inch Omnis that uh, Eosh from our robotics designed. Uh, they don't turn very well. It took us probably 10 of the of the 72 hours to fix the Omnis, maybe even probably even more. It took a long time to fix the Omnis. And then I'll go on to the mobile goal clamp. The mobile goal clamp is a four bar. It's 3D printed. We use 3D printed parts uh, to accelerate the, the RA3D process, but also just because it was more fun. So we have three wides that are mutilated on the end. The goal slides right in. And then we have two five and a half watt motors powering this. Uh, we originally tried 36 to 12 but that did not have enough torque at all. So now we're running um, 48 to 12. It might not even, might even be 60 to 12. No, I don't even remember. I think it's 48 to 12. <laughs> so it comes back in. And then what's really nice about this is it's all inside the robot now. And uh, we actually run these hooks. There are these standoffs down here, which you can see. And that stops the mobile goal from being, okay. It's a little, it must be a little loose, but generally under normal robot pressure, it stops the robot or it stops the goal from being stolen. So you can just drag it around and it's fairly locked in. And then putting a goal down is very simple. Uh, the four bar being motorized is also really nice because we don't have to worry about air uh, when we're picking up mobile goals. And it's also just fast in general. And then uh, we'll go on to the arm. This is definitely the coolest part of the robot, but also the sketchiest part of the robot. So we have the 62 four bar chain bar. Um, it's cantilevered. Uh, that is pretty strong. Um, definitely could be stronger. Uh, most of this was directly based off of the 62 robot itself. Um, but we quickly realized that five and a half watt motors I actually don't have that much power and also when you throw a piston on the end effector it puts a lot of stress on the chain bar and so that is something that would have to be fixed if if you guys were going to design a similar robot to this but uh this four bar chain bar was nearly the same length as the 62 robot uh, that's very overkill it actually goes out of the 32 inch vertical expansion limit uh, but we have software limiters everything's ran on macros so um, it makes it work anyways you can notice there is no mechanism to pick up the uh, to pick up the rings. Uh, we had this this vertical clamp uh, which went here, and this was the piston mounting point, and that actually worked pretty well. Um, I'll put in some videos right here, but the main issue was uh, it required a piston, which, as I mentioned, puts a lot of stress on the chain bar uh, because having that piston weight is a ton for these five and a half watt motors. And two, it only moved one ring at a time effectively. We tried to design a needle during the RA3D, but everybody was tired and there really just wasn't enough time to properly design one. And we also needed the needle to be completely passive. Um, but I can also put in a video of the macros being ran without the weight of the piston and how much of a difference that made. Uh, but yeah, the, it scored on wall stakes. It could with the vertical clamp. It did score on the mobile goals. Uh, we had fully macroed everything out, and so that was all nice. Another thing to quickly mention is 
when we were holding a mobile goal, people have asked questions about um, being able to drive under the bar. Obviously, because the mobile goal sits on top of the drive. So when we were designing the robot, it actually did not appear to clear. And we were hoping that the flex of the of the cap would be enough. And so what <laughs> what actually ended up happening um, was it can clear without scrubbing now because the drive has no top brace. So it's starting to bend in. And due to that fact, the mobile goal sits a little lower than it used to. Um, although it did clear because the rubber did just bend the mobile goal back and it could go under, but it couldn't go under backwards and it was it was very mid. Um, a solution that we had for that was just to widen the drive because these are bowl shaped. So if we widen the drive, then the mobile goal can sit deeper inside the drive. Uh, but obviously we didn't really go further with this design uh, considering the flaws we found. But yeah. It was a pretty fun robot to build. It was a very cool robot to build. I will link the photos album in the description. Um, thank you to Owl for coming down and designing and building the robot with us. It was a lot of fun and good luck in high stakes.